Mungu bila roho wangu chumba na mtaka ni kwenye roho ni vivyo kama nataka kile misa wapo Ni ya ndisa mbulu bila na sero kweli sana tuwe kile na roho chumba hii Tunasile tunasile Misa mbula oyo Mr Ben Kelapa Kama kikira ni vivyo mtaka moni chikira roho rumbu kama inaona kile ni wa ena buru FM This is FBC News, I'm Jackie Spate in this bulletin. Fiji National Provident Fund to distribute about $228 million to members. Fiji and IMF discuss policies to enhance resilience to natural disasters. And FSC declares protest by Rarawai Kane lorry operators illegal. The Fiji National Provident Fund has declared an interest of 6%, or about $224.8 million, distributed to FMPF members' accounts next Tuesday. This year's interest is paid under the new formula that ensures interest is credited at the end of the financial year and not the previous year's closing balance. Board Chair Ajit Korogoda says 2015 has been a remarkable year, one of the best in over a decade. He says the 6% interest, which is tax-free, closely matches income from investments after allowance for operating costs. Other notable achievements include increased income from new investments like Vodafone Fiji and Offshore, enhancement in IT systems and processes, commencement of Mormi Hotel and the Greg Street Development Projects. The government is now more focused on acting on recommendations of reports on natural disasters. The Minister for National Disaster Management, Inia Seriratu, says in the past the reports were collecting dust on the shelves. Ritika Pratap reports. Senior policymakers from the region met in Nandi today to discuss policies to enhance macroeconomic resilience to natural disasters in the Pacific Islands. Disasters after disasters, we have very good reports compiled by IM, SPC, IMF, the World Bank, but it's all filed away, and we wait for the next one. We are always more willing to provide funds post-disaster, but little is done pre-disaster. <clears throat> and the terminology in Fiji changed completely from 2012. We shifted from a culture of reaction to a culture of prevention. The high-level Pacific Island dialogue focused on a number of impacts of natural disasters, the lessons learned from them. A recent study on natural disasters by IMF pointed to the fact that for damages and losses equivalent to 1% of GDP, economic growth drops to 0.7% in that particular year of disaster. In so far as our experiences, we have enough of that in our small island uh, nation states, uh, we need help to be able to uh, mitigate some of these issues. The island officials responsible for fiscal projections uh, and medium-term framework have close policy interactions with the IMF team. Timely events such as this shed important light on a critical problem, expose us to strategies that have been used effectively and strategies that have failed in other parts of the world and help focus and guide national efforts on building resilience. Fiji has experienced 19 cyclones in the past two decades, which cost $1.3 billion to the economy. Fiji co-hosted the workshop with the IMF. Kritika Pratap, FBC News. The police force is aware of groups of people holding peaceful protests against the government's decision to change the national flag. And Police Commissioner Major General Ben Hunaval says they are closely monitoring to ensure there are no threats to public security. Hunaval says they would also like to stress that while everyone has the right to express their opinion, it must, however, be done within the ambit of the law. The groups of mainly young people have been photographed holding Fiji flags at various spots around Suva, Nasinu and Nausori. They have used the social media to publicize their protest against the change in the national flag. The government has released 23 designs for a new flag and is seeking the public's opinion for the new design. 
The deadline for the feedback is Tuesday. A new national flag will be unveiled on Fiji's Independence Day on October 10th. A protest by the cane lorry operators at the Rarawai Sugar Mill in Ba yesterday has been deemed illegal by the Fiji Sugar Corporation. The operators were up in arms over what they claim is an unfair preference. Eleanor Turangai View reports. Cane lorry operators refused to supply cane to the Rarawai Sugar Mill yesterday, stopping crushing for almost a whole day. They claim that dumper trucks, which carry mechanically harvested cane, are being given priority over trucks that carry hand-harvested cane. It is not fair that lorries come and go direct and we have some rules here to come in the queue, follow the queue and then go to the way business then offload their cane. However, after a meeting with the Fiji Sugar Corporation and receiving legal advice, the operators resumed supplying cane to the mill, hence resuming crushing. According to the association, the issue has been raised with FAC several times over the past two months but nothing has been done about it. They are now looking at taking FSC to court. Today we have claimed that we'll go through the lawyer, we'll do our job, and we we'll, might be giving notice that there's things to, to be done properly, and if not, then after the notice we might have to stop. FSC Executive Chair Abdul Kantul, FBC News, the protest is in itself illegal and that they don't want such a situation early into the crushing season. He says all issues regarding the situation at the Rarawe Mill has been resolved and crushing has resumed. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. The Melanesian Spearhead Leaders Summit began today in Honiara in the Solomon Islands. One of the first orders of business was the appointment of a new chairman. The Solomon Islands Prime Minister, Manase Songavare, who will hold post for the next two years. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama arrived yesterday and used the opportunity to meet with a number of groups attending the MSG event. Tomorrow, the leaders from PNG, Fiji, the Solomon Islands and the FLKNS of New Caledonia will attend a retreat where West Papua's application for membership to the sub-regional body will be discussed. PNG's Peter O'Neill arrived today and he joins Baini Marama and Songavare with Vanuatu Sato Kilman, unable to attend because of legal battles to do with his government. Still to come on FBC News Art Exhibition showcasing the richness of wildlife in the Vatuira seascape opens at the Fiji Museum. just joined us on the system after dark. This is a homegrown number courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. The sentencing of Faraz Jan Mohammed and others may not be the end of the road for the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption, which investigated the $3 million scam. All four perpetrators have been handed various prison terms. However, FICAC is considering further action on the proceeds of crime in relation to bar businessman Faraz Jan, who siphoned $3.1 million from the then Department of National Roads. Under the Proceeds of Crime Act 1997 and a 2012 amendment decree, the state, through the courts, can seize property which is deemed to have been procured with illegally obtained monies. Meanwhile, Mohammed's family has confirmed he will appeal his eight-year prison term. The Civil Aviation Authority of Fiji is investigating an incident that occurred at Taunovo Airstrip, Dumba today. CAF says a light twin-engine aircraft ran off the runway strip onto the grass. There were no injuries and inspectors are on site for investigations. Upgrading works at Churchill Park is progressing well and expected to be completed by December. Akusit Tale reports the main sporting venue in Lautoka is undergoing a major construction. Perfect weather conditions have helped work move as projected at Churchill Park. An expression of interest has been advertised for contractors to lay the tracks for athletes. 
those uh, who have the know-how and the laying of uh, tracks. Uh, but as far as the pavilions are concerned, uh, that has been taken out. Uh, the groundwork now has been uh, undertaken by the city council and uh, the drainage. After that, the contractor will come in and they will start the work. The main ground will be extended towards the multi-purpose court for the installation of a 400-meter synthetic track and the construction of a pavilion. I'm very much looking forward for that and I've told my team at Ladoga City Council that uh, I want to see that it's finished on time so that we can host the next Coca-Cola Games in Ladoga. The initial cost was around 2.8 million and uh, I have been brief uh, last week that the cost will uh, increase but the, because of some variation uh, but we're looking at around 3.5 to 3.6 million to complete the athletic tracks in Ottawa. The facelift is expected to be completed by the end of the year. Akosita Tale, FBC News. An art exhibition depicting the richness of wildlife in the Vatu Ira seascape is now open at the Fiji Museum in Suva. The exhibition is aimed at encouraging people to preserve the resources in this pristine environment. Ellen Stahls reports. The exhibition has been six months in the making. Paintings, photos and mosaic all speaking volumes about the diversity of Vatuira. When we talk about the science of conservation and of climate change, a lot of people don't understand it. So we're, we're looking at creative ways of getting that message across to more people and, and in a way that people can understand and truly relate to. Art and photography is one of those ways. The Vatuira Seascape Art Exhibition organized by the Wildlife Conservation Society, features about 75 works of art done by about 30 local artists. President Ratu Epeli Nailatikau, who launched the exhibition last night, said the government's attention to the environment has come at the right time. In the context of the Vatu Ira Seascape, Fiji's renewed emphasis on sustainable development through a green growth framework and through long-term planning are blessings to the collective interest to protect and preserve our unique natural resources. The Vatuira seascape, which includes the provinces of Mbua, Lomaiviti, Ra and Tailevu, is home to about 120 plant species unique to the area and more than 1,000 fish species. It is also a world-class diving destination attracting up to 36,000 tourists every year. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Say no to drugs is the message that students are being urged to take home as the country commemorates International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking this week. Schools commemorated the day today, although the designated date is tomorrow. Julie Vatwaliwali with the story. Working on the theme Our Life, Our Health, Our Responsibility, Students of Morris Brothers Primary School in Suva perform drama and songs to bring to life their views about saying no to drugs. Head teacher Felix Magnus says they want students to know that there are other ways of solving problems. There is always a way. And it is not drugs or not abuse that will help the children. But it is the, the loving care of nurturing them well and recognizing them the spirit of God. Class 8 student Savinada Sorovaki says he has learned a lot from the activities organized today. Uh, you know anyone that's uh, taking drugs, uh, try and uh, tell them to get help, or if not, just uh, tell them to try and stop because it will affect uh, their future. Savu Savu youngster Paul Peter says drugs is not always the answer. As to my friends, uh, during rough times, uh, don't take drugs because uh, it will really affect your lives and uh, your future. Parents and friends were also present at the No Drug program held at school today to show the support in eradicating this nationwide problem. Julie Vatuwaliwali, FBC News. The Citizens Constitutional Forum has a new chief executive officer. The NGO today announced that Sara Mbulatani Matai Tawakilai will lead the organization from next month. Matai Tawakilai has had extensive experience in management and rural community development. A former primary school teacher and more recently at the top of provincial level governance for the Dhakaundrove Provincial Council Office as the Rokotui Dhakaundrove. 
Matai Tawakilai had previously worked with CCF as part of its education program for three years. And sports is up next. Here's Jamie with the very latest. And good evening. Coming up, Fiji contingent to the Pacific Games present its Ita Tau to the president today. And Fiji football sides ready to take on the Phoenix. We'll have this and more after the break. Gold FM, only the classic hits, beautiful song from the group Firehouse and When I Look Into Your Eyes. Before that, you heard from Smokey Robinson with One Hot Beat. We'll take a short break and join us in the next hour for more music from Seal. Bulabla, I'm DJ Tora. Join me every weekdays, 7 until midnight, on the premium classics. Right here on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fijian football wonder boy Roy Krishna and Rusiate Matararang are ready to lead their respective national teams against the Wellington Phoenix this Saturday. The duo was selected to captain the senior and under-23 teams respectively. Josephine Navula has the details. The national football side have stepped up its preparations under the leadership of their captains. Mambasa led Roy Krishna says the senior side has shown good potential over the past few days in training. I trained for them with them <clears throat> for a couple of days and you now they look uh, really fit because they've been playing in the league and uh, you know, like I said, I'm enjoying every moment, especially the weather, so it will be a good game. Leading the under-23 side, Suva striker Rusiate Matarirenga says the games against the Phoenix Academy team is a big step up for the players. Well, uh, the uh, under-20s just uh, joined us this week and uh, they are dealing well with uh, uh, the boys that has been with us for the last uh, five weeks in camp. Uh, and it's uh, great uh, to be playing with the national team uh, every training session and we have been learning a lot from them since uh, they have joined us last Monday and uh, the boys have been uh, doing well. Coach Carlos Busetti has commended the hard work of his keepers. Oh, he's in another level now. It's incredible in the way he's playing a training session. And the same with Rosiate. Rosiate lead on the ground too when, when we play the game. So we are very extremely happy with the appointment. The first game is on Saturday at the ANZ Stadium in Suva at 5.30 p.m., before which the Phoenix Premier side plays the national under-23 team at 2.30 p.m. The return matches will be played on Tuesday next week at Govin Park in Bar. Josephine Navula, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, top Fijian striker Osea Vakatalisao says the playoffs against the Wellington Phoenix will be a tough task. But the 29-year-old from Tailevu says being selected to be part of the team is an honor. It's great to represent our country and I am very happy to be one of those selected to play against Wellington Phoenix. Vakatalisao will feature for the national side in the two matches against the Knicks. The Fiji contingent to the Pacific Games presented the Itau Tau to the President, His Excellency Ratu Epeli Nailatikau today. The President reminded the athletes the importance of the Games. He also reminded the athletes what winning at the Games means to the people of Fiji. All the Fijians here expect gold medals. Not silver or bronze, they expect gold medals. You all know that. It's happened before. Every time a team goes away, that's what they expect. And that's why you've been trained. The Pacific Games will be held in Papua New Guinea from the 4th to the 18th of July. The FMF Gymnasium is ready to host the 8th Mbule FM Maris Volleyball Tournament starting tomorrow. The venue underwent final touches today ahead of the two-day tournament. A total of 48 teams, 32 men's and 16 women's teams will take part at the event. The tournament starts tomorrow morning with the final to be held on Saturday. Hakwa Investments today launched its brand of water. The company hopes the investment will go a long way, especially with its motive to aid the development of sports in Fiji. Rohit Deo has more. We will go where others cannot go and we will do what others cannot do. A good effort for a great cause. Aqua Investments will try its best to get sporting bodies to reach greater heights. It has been our sports culture, not only rugby, sports culture to ask for sponsorship year in, year out. So this project 
will help these people, as, as uh, my colleague mentioned, Kate has mentioned that it is a source of funds, a regular source of funds for sporting bodies. Even though it's, it's, uh, it's off-season, they still get money. The new initiative is getting massive support from Please Beverages. Naturally, a very high quality artesian water being promoted by rugby clubs has a really good fit for the community and for us. And we were very happy to work with Hakwa and produce this water. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation will also help out in promoting the good cause. We've said over and over before at MPC that uh, Fiji produces some of the best sports people in, in the world. We have uh, natural talent in abundance, uh, but to nurture that and to and to put people in the in, in, in the right direction, uh, you do need resources. And in order to have those resources, you need money. And uh, this is a great initiative. Some organizations who have already incorporated with Hakwa include the rugby unions from Nandronga, Namosi, Malolo, Tavua and Yavusa. Plans are already underway to include other rugby organizations and also other sporting bodies apart from rugby. Ruhit Deo. ABC Sports. The Fiji International Golf Tournament is gaining momentum with organizers pleased with the inroad being made for the event. The tournament in its second year will be played once again at the spectacular Natondola Golf Course in Singatoka. Indra Singh has more. It's one under at this stage and in she goes and that takes him to two under. With just over four months to go until the return of the newest tournament on the PGA Tour of Australasia, Preparations are in full swing for the Fiji International. VJ for a birdie putt up the green. It, uh, the resort looks fantastic. The golf course in great condition and all ready for year two of the Fiji International. He was four under at this stage. The tournament, which was born in 2014, is expected to be a bigger and better event in its second year. Four under at this stage and that just... <laughs> Look him to the lead at five under. Well, I think year one is always, you, you, there's always a bit of trial and error. You're never quite sure about what's going to happen, but it was a great first year. And we've learnt a lot, and we can make this year even bigger and better. Good fight back after making triple bogey eight at the fifth. He birdied six and then had this at nine. The makeup of players gates the success and attraction of any tournament, and a lot of hard work is being put in behind the scenes to once again rope in the very best. The par three fourth. Look, in, probably in a couple of months' time. Uh, normally they're all sort of wrapped up by about the British Open time. So probably in the next four to six weeks, rest assured we're talking to some of the biggest names in the sport. It's a beautiful It didn't look like missing. No. I thought it might drop short. No, just keep running. The beautiful Natandola will once again bring the best golfers from around the world to this country. While the cause is one of the toughest in the golfing world, the thrill of having yet another year of Fiji International could just be very hard to resist. Interesting, FBC Sports. And that was your sports for tonight. Good evening. Life Insurance Corporation of India is providing over 40,000 road safety stickers in an effort to create more awareness on road safety. LICI today signed a memorandum of understanding for the provision of the stickers. LICI General Manager Fiji Operations Vimlesh Kumar Dar says this is a huge step for the company in creating awareness on our roads to help save lives. We, both organizations, LICI and LTA, are in a way concerned about insurance. LTA by ensuring that the road safety measures are followed and people's lives are uh, saved on the roads. The stickers will be distributed around the country and the onus will now be on drivers and pedestrians to follow road safety rules. Fine weather prevailed over most parts of the country today. A trough of low pressure lies to the north of the Solomon Islands and extends southeastwards over Fortuna, northern Tonga and Niue. Meanwhile, another trough of low pressure affects French Polynesia. Today's temperatures saw Bar hit the highest at 32 degrees this afternoon, while in Kul Savasavu the temperature only got up to 24 degrees. Expect fine weather for the public holiday tomorrow. There could be some brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Cool nights ahead. Outlook for Saturday, fine apart from brief showers over the eastern parts of the larger islands and interior of the larger islands, cool at night. 
And the main points again, the Fiji National Provident Fund to distribute about $228 million to members. Fiji and IMF discuss policies to enhance resilience to natural disasters, and FSC declares protest by Rarawai Kane lorry operators illegal. To our poll question this week, we're asking, are you satisfied with the services provided by municipal councils? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Good night. घर संसार में आपका स्वागत है आपका अपना छोटा सा स्वर जहाँ प्यार भरे रिश्ते पलते हैं जहाँ हेल्थी रहने की सलाह दी जाती है जहाँ हम आपको और भी सुंदर बनाते हैं और जहाँ स्वाद की सौगात भी है नमस्कार मैं हूँ पल्लवी सोमवार से शुक्रवार 9 से 12 तक रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन पर घर संसार में शामिल रहिए मेरे साथ ऐसा सुंदर सपना अपना